Right. Okay. So we are now moving over to um, Micromanager, and the advantage of that is the software controls the acquisition and the filter wheel as well. So not only do you get to um, choose the exposure times and things like that, but it'll then capture a sequence. So you don't have to remember exposure times and things like that between different slides. The software does everything. So when you launch Micromanager, this is the, the window that you see. So that's where we're going to control all of the, the different channels. You can tell it what objective you're using, and that's going to apply the calibration for that objective. But what it doesn't do is change the actual objective. You have to do that manually. So we're on the times 20 at the moment. So this is linked to the times 20. If we change it to times 10 by just twisting the, um, the nose piece, you'd then have to just say, OK, I'm using the times 10. So if you get it wrong, your calibrations will be wrong. You can change that in ImageJ later. OK. But mainly, this is how you control it, via the Channels tab. So if you want to look at DAPI or FITSI or Texas Red, it's from the drop-down list, we've also got Psi 3 and Psi 5 filters on there as well. So just choose which one you want to look at. And then we go over to here and open and close actually opens the shutter. So it's turning the LEDs on, but that's what's letting the light through. So you can look down the microscope, focus on your sample, admire, admire what you're looking at. Then you want to go to the next channel. You just do it from the drop down list. So you're then going to look at the Fitzy. See everything's nice. Go to the, the Texas Red channel. And again, admire your sample. Move it around, same, same as you would do normally. And then when you're ready to actually start taking some pictures, uh, we're going to do it a slightly different way. We're going to use multi-dimensional acquisition. Um, so launch this. And this allows you to control everything, which we can't do. So you can do time lapse on there if you wanted. There's multi-point, which we're not going to do. Z stacks, which we can't do because it's only the filter wheel that's motorized. Everything else on the microscope is completely manual still. So the focus and, and X, Y. But what we can do is we can acquire channels. And we can say where we actually want these images to be automatically saved to. So you can do that, point it to a, a directory. If you log into Isilon at the beginning, you can actually save directly onto Isilon, which makes sense rather than transferring them over um, one by one. So in here, um, have we got a, a decent location? Okay, data D. There's there's one. <laughs> I'll I'll put them in me. Um, make yourself a folder in a folder in a folder if you want to. So we'll we'll put a new one in here. Test. So that's the directory it's going to go to, and then you can give it a a name like slide A. Um, positive. Okay, so everything's then going to get named that incrementally. So that'd be the first image will be underscore one, then underscore two. So it's automatically saving as it as it goes along. And then in channels, we can say what we want to acquire. So from this little channel group, it's actually channels that we're going to acquire, and we've got three channels in, in on this slide. What do we want to do? First of all, we're going to do DAPI. Um, then Fitzy, then Texas Red, and it should. There we go. Allow you to, to automatically apply a colour to these images when they're required. Right, and what we have here then is the exposure time for the DAPI, the Fitzy, and the Texas Red. This is actually linked to our, our live focus window, so the value that we have here will be applied down here. So let's let's work out the exposure times for each each image. So what we do is pull the bar out and there's only 100% eyes, 100% camera anymore. And we can go live. Okay. 
there's nothing there yet because we haven't opened the shutter. So we're on, let's start with DAPI. Filter moves to DAPI, open, and there we, there we have the DAPI image. So we can focus um, as normal. And then you've got some controls here. Is the histogram in the same way that you would have seen it in, in MetaView? And you've got, got different options. You can say, okay, I want to auto scale it, which is always gonna show your image from, from black to white, regardless of how good the image is. You can say, no, no, show me the full data range. And this camera is a 14 bit camera, so it can see 16,000 shades of gray. Okay. Or it, once you're full, you can, if you want, bring it in and set it to a point. Yeah. And you've got then the options. You might say, well, actually, I'm going to take a 150 millisecond exposure. Enter to command it. And you can see there now, the DAPI has changed to 150. If we decided to um, actually go, let's go to 50, they're, they're linked together. The other thing that you can do is actually change the intensity of the LEDs that we're using for each channel. So this LED, so it's not mercury bulbs anymore, it's LEDs. We can actually increase the intensity of the LED. So you can keep a short exposure, high intensity, or the other way around. If your sample's bleaching really quickly, you can drop the intensity of the LED and increase the exposure time like that. Okay, so every time you start a micromanager session, these LEDs will all drop to 50%. That's a, a default starting point. So you have to change them up and down each, each time. The other thing that we have on here is camera gain. So camera gain one is using the full pixel, um, the bit depth of the camera, the, the full well capacity. A gain of two looks like it boosts your signal. So it's a lot easier to saturate your sample because you're saying, okay, I'm only gonna assume that my, my pixel will become half full and then divide that into 16,000 shades of gray. Or you can go to a gain state of three, which is even brighter, okay? So if you've got a dim sample, changing the gain state is, is really good, but it means it's much easier to saturate your sample. If that's something that you kind of want to know about, come and see me and I can explain it probably a little bit better by drawing you the usual millions of pictures. Okay, so once you say, ah, that's, that's good for me, I'm happy with um, the exposure for the DAPI, we then go on to the next channel. So let's, let's try the Fitzy. The camera moves around automatically. I might say 250 for, for the Fitzy happy with that obviously you can you can focus and move move around keeping an eye on the the histogram all the time to make sure that you're not saturating anywhere if you want to you can change the lookup table to give you a saturation indicator so if we went up to the blue LED which is for Fitzy and if we hit saturation at any point we should I was expecting to see some um, some blue and red red dots. Hmm. Okay. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> that should have done. All right. Can I explain why that doesn't work? That looks like it should have been the uh, unless it was. You have to stop it and go live to to change the indicator. No? Okay, right. Forget that. What you can do though is as you're moving your, your cursor around, um, you can see at the top here your pixel intensities. So even though it looks virtually saturated, actually we weren't up at six these aren't up at sixteen thousand. Let's change the trick gain state of the camera. Okay, there we go. Gain state two. 
So that would allow us with gain state two to actually get, as you can see up there, the saturation. So it might be useful. Um, depends on what you want to look at. Okay, so take that down to 200. Okay, nice for that. And finally, drop down to the Texas red. And this is the green LED. You might choose to move that up to 500 milliseconds. Okay, and we can focus. There we go, just a little bit of saturation. Okay, happy with that? Right, so what we've done is we've defined the exposure time for each of the channels that we want to acquire. So we can close the shutter, we can stop live, we can get rid of this if you want, it'll just pop up next time. And now we actually want the computer to take control of the microscope to acquire the image set. So what we can do now is we hand over control to the microscope by ticking auto shutter here. Okay. Now when we press acquire, the microscope moves around to the different channels individually and takes the, the, the blue, green and red channels. So you, at first you look at that and you go, oh god, what's going on? This is completely saturated. But if we have a look at the histogram for each of our channels, you can see what's, what's actually going on. So we can adjust the scaling of this, this image for the, for the three different channels. And the other thing that you can do is you can actually toggle on off the different different channels. So you can look at each channel individually. Or all together. Okay. So that image is automatically saved because we defined where we wanted it to go to. So that is saved already. If we want to save this as kind of a snapshot an RGB 8-bit image. We can do that by going to image, type, RGB color, and that will duplicate it as a, a single RGB image. And you can then save that into your um, folder as a TIFF. So we'll save it into the same um, place as my raw data. So in there, in test. So here we are, po slide A, positive one. There's my data that was automatically saved and I can save that as an RGB. So that's finished, that's finished. If we want to open those images, download image J, um, and you can then just either drag in your RGB, image, colour, split your channels into your three separate channels as normal, or if you open up the, the stack, what you can do is you've got the three bars here, so you've got the blue channel component, the green channel component, and the red, and that allows you with image, colour, channels tool to actually toggle the channels on and off as before and you can see it looks like that original image so it's back it's the full data completely screwed up and um, scaling so you can go to image adjust brightness contrast and here you are because we're in the red component we can see the red histogram so you can adjust that to whatever you like and you can turn off whoops everything else so you can see how you're adjusting that go to the next channel which is the green yeah eventually we'll get it the green and we can adjust the green histogram move to the mm -hmm. red and adjust the the red and there's the blue So you've got, you don't lose that data, whatever you're doing. 
by saving it as a stack, you've got the raw, raw data that was acquired on the camera as well as the RGB. So you know, that's all, all downstream. The beauty of this then is we want to then go back to the camera. We're now taking control back off the PC. So we untick auto shutter and we're now able to open and close the shutter manually. So we, we push the bar in, find your next sample, go back to whatever channel you, you want to look at, open up, let's move to another, another area. Okay, lovely. Pull the bar out, go live, focus on your, your image. You know, we don't have to change the exposure times because these are the sort of things that you want to be set between the different channels, uh, different different areas of your slide so that you're consistent every time. You're taking the same exposure time for the, for the red, green and blue. So I'm happy with that area. So stop live, close the shutter, hand control over to the PC, go to multi-dimensional acquisition. And these are all the same still. These are what we used before and what I want to use again. Now all I have to press is acquire and it'll take the three images. And this time it's using the scaling that we, we applied for the first image. So that's exactly the same as the scaled image we took before. So that's saved automatically. If we want to save that as a snapshot, image type RGB color and save it off as a, as a TIFF. Up one, and there it is. There's my next slide, auto increment to, to two, and save it in there. And that's all you have to do. Hopefully that's, that makes sense. Right, thank you very much.